Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Dr. Norman Chen. Uh, Norman co-founded co Apache Design Solutions in 2001 and currently serves as a chief technologist at Semiconductor Business Unit of N6. He is also currently leading the effort of applying machine learning, deep learning at N6. Prior to Apache, Dr. Chen lead a group of uh, lead a group at Palo Alto HP Labs, focused on interconnect related signal power integrity issues and contributing to the HP Intel IA64 microprocessor design. Dr. Chen received his BS, MS, and PhD in electrical engineering and computer science from the University of California, Berkeley. He holds 13 patents and has authored over 50 technical papers. He also co-authored a popular book uh, by the name of Interconnect Analysis and Synthesis. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please help me to welcome Norman Chan. Before I start my talk, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, ANSYS. So many of you may not uh, know ANSYS very well. The ANSYS actually is an uh, uh, internal market cap. It's about $15 billion company. So it's not smaller than Cadence or actually maybe larger in some sense. And we have a global, uh, we have a more than 3,200 uh, people working in the company. And our service uh, segments in the market is on the pervasive simulation for all the vertical uh, market uh, segments, including automotive, uh, avionics, uh, and also the, all the chip packaging systems uh, and the vertical segments of markets. And in particular, for electronics uh, market, that ANSYS uh, is uh, very heavy in terms of uh, automotive uh, ADAS market and also the uh, discrete model simulation and uh, ISO 26262 uh, in terms of the Medini software. And we handle all the sensors and modeling simulation uh, in terms of the chip. Uh, I'm coming from the semiconductor BU, so we are working on the electronics uh, in terms of the chip packaging systems for all the modern simulation, for all the back end problems including water drop, BSD, thermal, and many others. Uh, and so we work together uh, very well with RDU to provide a complete solution to every vertical market segment. For machine learning, that we all know that uh, it's uh, divided into uh, supervised learning and also unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. I think the key is that uh, nowadays for every engineer to understand um, what is the content of machine learning and deep learning. And our job in terms of engineering education is to apply machine learning and deep learning in our domain, in individual domain. So in our domain for uh, chip packaging systems, and how do we apply our problems uh, for ANSYS engineering problems? And there are many techniques uh, in different areas. I won't go into details. And we, today we'll be focusing on the engineering applications. So in terms 
the ANSYS software, uh, what we focus is on the simulation of different kinds of uh, multi-aspect values. So any multi-aspect simulation, we start with the design and also the simulation input. And then we go through the simulation uh, using the finite element method or some other fast uh, method. And then we generate a lot of data in terms of analytics. And we use this data and to optimize the design and do the optimization cycle and, and come back to the design. So in terms of the opportunities for applying machine learning and deep learning, now we can see that the generative design is one possible area. If you have a place of a metal plate and you want to make it into different shape, and with the, under the constraint of the weight and robustness of the uh, metal object, so there are many, many ways to generate uh, different kind of design. And this uh, is very suitable for generating a uh, Sarah network technique to generate all different kind of designs. And with that, you need a very fast simulation technique for design critique. <coughs> so at ANSYS this year, now we announced that we have a discovery line, and which is uh, heavily GPU based. Uh, we're running on uh, several hundreds of cores of GPUs and we can do an instantaneous uh, design simulation. So to provide a design critique for the generative design. And the other area is in terms of data, because the simulation input data is a lot. So a lot of data, how do you reduce the data? For example, for money color simulation uh, for the device in the circuit. And this is a very popular area and done by many, many companies. Like for money color simulation, how do you reduce the data? And how do you speed up money color simulation? And in terms of, the, for example, the, for the variance of the high front higher uh, sigma uh, uh, calculation, that you can, with the different kind of techniques, reinforcement learning, uh, to reduce the data that like feed into the money color simulation uh, for, uh, for that purpose and also how to identify a representative input and because the simulation uh, takes time and it's computational intensive. So in terms of com uh, simulation, that's a core competency. Uh, in essentially, there are two areas of uh, applying AI in, uh, in any particular company that you can have the machine learning with the generation of your own tool, uh, for example, for our company. And then uh, the customers certainly need to generate a lot of data uh, for customers' data. And that's for the whole competency of the products. The second application is that you work with customers. Customers will generate a lot of data and how to <coughs> work with the customer data and to improve their process and optimize their design. So for the simulation, which is more for the whole competency, uh, of our products, but very often the simulation time is too long because of the irrelevant input and how do you reduce the uh, irrelevant input and for example, the adaptive meshing. Like for the meshing around the vehicle, there are many, many areas that you do not need so such a final meshing, you just need a force meshing. So how do you interplay between the final meshing and the force meshing? Uh, the machine learning technique can be very useful. The runtime predictor, some of our tools can run more in a day or two, and or sometimes for the tool, uh, fluent uh, simulation, it can run more in two weeks. And so we need a runtime predictor to predict, given the input before simulation, how much time does it take uh, for the simulation to finish. So that will give an idea for users uh, to run the simulation tool. Another big requirement from customers is the surrogate and also the hybrid model. This is due to the requirement of the multi-fidelity model that needed. The multi-fidelity model means that you want the instantaneous feedback of the simulation coming from the simulation tool. So you don't want to wait that long for two days or two weeks. You want to build, uh, reduce all the modeling or the behavior model and hopefully the accuracy is as good as from the finite element simulation. And of course, that's a very difficult task. And then come down to the analytics, that mainly you work with the customer for monitoring, diagnosis, and also across the tools for optimization. And for this area that uh, we help to our customers a lot. 
So I'll give you some examples and first uh, give you some experience uh, for the past two years. We have been working with customers and build different kind of applications. So a successful workflow from our experience is that first we identify an uh, area or a problem that is very suitable for machine learning and deep learning. And then you start collecting the data. And collection of data actually takes only 50% of the time throughout the life cycle of the project. So that takes a lot of paper and time. And after you have the data, the next, uh, it becomes uh, much easier because you can find the suitable machine learning and deep learning technique that can solve the problem. And then while you are training your model, you want to divide the data into the training data validation data for the iteration of the training model. And also you have to save some data for testing. Now the test data is never seen by the training uh, process. And while you deploy the tool in the customer's uh, site, that this uh, every day there's an uh, online uh, incremental data generated. So how do you include this incremental data into right to refine to fine tune the model it would be important. So give you a view that uh, for different kind of machine learning and deep learning technique, and uh, is that uh, for every possible problem, we have to use a deep learning technique. That's not necessarily true for engineering education. That for deep learning, it has a very good predictive power. That if you have a, a sufficient amount of data. However, for engineering education, very often we do not have a very large amount of data for training. So given a limited amount of data, other techniques can be very useful, uh, such as uh, decision tree, random forest, or the gradient boosting machine, which is uh, more advanced than uh, random forest. And that can achieve a good predictive power, also very tolerant to different kinds of uh, data inputs, uh, such as uh, missing data and incomplete data. And every day we are struggling with uh, the data contamination, also the data source. And for neural network, you have to transform the data for optimize and also uh, shift to different statistical distribution before you can apply the neural network technique. So after we run through uh, several applications, we found that we need to have an auto ML for engineering. We all know that there's an auto ML uh, for image recognition or auto ML for speech recognition applications from Google. However, for auto ML for engineering, the purpose is that uh, given different kind of applications, uh, if we have a way uh, to uh, process the whole flow and also in a canonical way uh, to automate the process by generating uh, auto ML models, and that would be very convenient that we can deploy the auto ML in different kind of applications very quickly. So for example, for auto ML, now you want to start with the data, sometimes you want to do the normalization, and you want to fill in the missing data, and then build a model to automatically generate the report. At the end, now we want to report that like, which machine learning model is the best uh, for the given problem. So this is the project that we are working on now. So right now, I want to give you a couple examples that uh, we have uh, published. And the first example is the one that we do uh, with uh, NVIDIA, and for this system that is building on the, our distributed uh, distribute, uh, architecture uh, for Cscape, and now we know uh, this is for on-chip application, so we know every piece of metal, and for in terms of body drop and electron migration, and we can run on hundreds of thousands of machines. Uh, so what we do is that we port we import the machine learning network, uh, such as the Sakilan or Kela's uh, TensorFlow, and also uh, XGBoost, for example, and to integrate into the Cisco framework. And so we can very quickly deploy a machine learning application. So this problem is that uh, after the circuit design, and there's an electron migration violation, and so that uh, with the senior designers, and for every electron migration violation, they have to decide if this problem can be waived or this problem needs to be fixed. So with the so much experience uh, coming from the previous designs, gradually they have a historical database that can help the junior designer to determine if this problem needs to be fixed or needs to be waived. 
So that's the purpose. So the idea is very simple. And so we started with the historical data, and then we build the, the model. Uh, the model that we build is using the k-means for the clustering of the data. Then we use the k means neighbor to determine the risk scoring and which EMI in the database is cause is the causes. Is it weak or is it fixed? And also we can try out the random forest, uh, which has a pretty good result as well. So the problem here is that we define the features. Uh, for this case, it's uh, more than 20 features. And for every two electron migration violations, we want to find the distance between the EM violation. And based on these features, in using the k-means technique and k to decide the risk scoring. And sometimes the problem size can be very large, uh, more than a million or more than uh, several millions. So with uh, similar to the Spark architecture, that uh, we can use a map reduce and to speed up the problem solving uh, speed. And for this case, uh, we can use uh, 256 workers. Uh, and then the runtime can be sped up by 20 times. And for every problem that you can use a computer magic to determine if the result is good or bad, from customer's request, the false negative, which is that the system thinks that this problem should be weighed, but actually this problem should be fixed. This is a very serious problem. So in terms of computer magic, that this category needs to be below 0.1%, uh, so we can achieve a 0.06%. They don't require that this go down to zero percent. So zero point zero six percent is uh, is okay. Then in terms of the client server architecture, now we can run in the server uh, for the training, also for the inferencing, and then we can show the result uh, using the GUI on the client side. And so at the end, uh, we will categorize each new EM validation in terms of the risk score. And what's the reasons uh, for the EM violation? It can be a unique uh, use case, minor violation, proven low risk, or the non true part. Uh, of course, our tool will never have a part. <laughs> so the whole system is implemented uh, using Python on our system and on the system. <coughs> so another example is uh, timing assistant. That uh, this is a very interesting problem that every customer is, is looking into is what's the role of impact on timing. And for this case, now we can base on the collection of the data, determine that which scenario uh, coming from different blocks that we need to work, and also what's the timing critical path that we need to solve. And for this problem uh, that will be presented next year at Design Summit, so welcome to come to the talk. So for this case, uh, we get very good results as well. So in summary, that, uh, uh, from our experience for the last two years, uh, we do different kind of education, uh, not only for our semiconductor BU, but uh, we're also working with a different BU uh, for fluent application, for ANSYS mechanical, uh, mechanical applications, and other applications. And so we use the machine learning and uh, deep learning pretty much everywhere in different BU. And the purpose <coughs> is that to define the problem, it's not easy, and then uh, if you find a problem where you should for machine learning, then the technique will come along, and also the data is very important. It's very difficult to collect the very good data, and that we need to spend a lot of effort for that. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, we have a lot of uh, semiconductor professionals in this audience, so thank you so much for that relevant uh, presentation. So at this time, I'm going to invite Brendan to uh, present the flag. <laughs>